Stephen Levy, author of In the Plaque. Stephen, the book's made a little bit of news because you, uh, you unearthed, or you didn't unearth, but you publicized the appearance of a painting in Google HQ, which is a painting of the past, a 19th century painting, but a warning to Googlers about the future. What is that painting and what was the warning? Or what is the warning? Right, well, in Building 2000, where uh, Google is working on its social product, there is a painting by, uh, I think it's uh, Alfred or Albert Bierstadt, uh, you know, done in the 19th century. And it, it looks like this giant wave, almost a tsunami there, but it's very, very rough sea and a sailboat clearly is in big trouble uh, from this wave there. And uh, you know, Vic Gundontra, who's working on that, that project, uh, helped explain what that thing was about. This is basically, uh, this social thing is a wave that Google can ride or it could en engulf Google. And Google takes this very, very seriously. And you know, my, the ground rules that I had when I was working on the book was they let me see the development of certain products um, that weren't uh, completed yet, but I promised them I wouldn't pre-announce any products in my book there. So I really, you know, there's some things I, I can't talk about, but they did allow me to talk a little bit about the origins of that, that social product and uh, in particular like that, that painting and a memo that uh, Urs Holzel, um, Google's one top engineering executive there, uh, you know, wrote saying, you know, we have to be cognizant of this social networking thing. We have to be more people oriented. And uh, that memo became known as the Urs quake within Google. So you didn't cover Plus One in the book, but you're implying the appearance of this product. What do you think of the Plus One initiative? Well, um, as we talk now, Google has announced a button called Plus One there. Right. And uh, I think, you know, as, as, as it stands, it's an interesting development. Interesting uh, rather than important. Uh, one of our writers said it was massive. I think I'm going to have to pass on talking about that. I don't want to go... Uh, anywhere where uh, I'm violating uh, a confidence. But what's your opinion of plus one in the overall strategic uh, future of Google? Do you see it as being a, a, a central product, a central service? I think talking generally... Uh, what, if they've announced it, what, why are you uncomfortable talking about it? I'm just curious. Do you know more than I know? Talking generally... <laughs> I think it's very clear that Facebook's hundreds of millions, approaching a billion users, creating information that Google can't index is a very serious problem for Google. Google wants to deliver all the world's information. And if some website, some service, a few miles away from Google, has valuable information that's really important to people, and Google can't use that information to help people find what they want, that's a problem for Google. And I think Google knows that. Is Google's problem with social, is it a philosophical problem, a problem of the way they think, or is it an engineering problem, or is it a product problem? You know, it, it might be a, a little of all of them, but I think it's overblown to say that Google's DNA won't allow it to do a social product there. You know, Mark Zuckerberg isn't necessarily the most social person on the planet Earth, yet he is able to identify something that people wanted to do. Uh, he has a philosophy about it, and he's able to execute brilliantly to make a product that hundreds of millions of people use for, for social needs. Uh, the people at Google, they're, they're, fairly, they're pretty social people, and they're pretty good engineers, and Google has a lot of information about people that probably is going to be helpful as they pursue this path. So I would not say generically that Google is unable or even hobbled in coming up with this. But they did miss it and they did allow people like Ev Williams and Dennis Crowley to leave and, and form right. their own important social There, there was, and I get into this. Yeah, you, you deal with in, it in, in a very book. interesting I, the way. The comedy of errors yeah. uh, and missteps in the social space, often for different reasons. Work it, it really was a technical challenge, basically. They put all the engineering help into work it uh, in transforming its platform. It was originally written on .NET, right? So they wanted to, to, to change that. And at the time, that was a lot of engineers. They gave 20 engineers to, to do that or something like that. And that was a pretty big, or I think Marissa 
told me it would take 20 engineers to keep developing that. And that was a substantial percentage of their engineers they have to pull from other projects. It was just too much to do. Uh, how they realized the riches to be had on that, maybe they would have found those 20 engineers. But uh, so Orkut didn't get the support it needed. And um, uh, Dennis Crowley didn't get the engineers he needed, and the few engineers for, for Dodgeball, Dodgeball right. right? And you know, he actually came up with an idea that was Twitter. He told me about a meeting he had with someone from Nokia, and he said, you know, maybe we should just do the status of Foursquare without the location. And the two of them passed you know, their phones back and forth, trying this out there. Uh, but no one at Google thought that was interesting. Uh, and of course, Ev, Ev Williams left uh, you know, uh, after Google bought Blogger. Uh, so Google had missed opportunities, and Buzz uh, had that privacy flap, which really uh, wasn't built into the product, was something that could have been avoided. Uh, so they're back to square one.